Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, welcome to the pre-applicant webinar for SAMHSA's Notice of Funding Opportunity, the NOFO for Project Launch, which stands for Linking Actions for the Unmet Needs in Children's Health. Um, as you probably know, SAMHSA is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or federal agency within the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, my name is Caitlin Fitzsimmons. I'm a project officer and a public health advisor here at SAMHSA. Yeah, I canceled it because of this. Yeah. yeah. And I am covering for my colleague Brooke Sims today and will lead you through the pre-applicant webinar regarding project launch. Um, please note as well. Oh, we sorry. Um, no, I meant to actually send out an email. But sorry. Okay, now please, we, please put yourself on mute. Please yeah, put yourself so on mute. Or Jasmine, can you double check that there, everyone's on mute? And please, if you can, put yourself on mute and make sure you're on mute. We can hear you. Hey, Link, can you unmute yourself, please? Sorry, I unmuted everybody. Yep. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Just pull up. Slides here. Okay. So, um, I'll just introduce myself again. So Caitlin Fitzsimmons, project officer here at SAMHSA. Um, also on the line, just to give thanks, we have my colleague, Jasmine Savaris, um, who's helping with the te technical aspects of the webinar. And also we have our um, SAMHSA's Mental Health Promotion Branch Chief, Nancy Kelly on the line as well today. Um, a few housekeeping things before we dive into the webinar. Please feel free if you would like to write your name and your respective organization or entity into the chat. Um, and please note, we will only take questions in the chat. So please feel free to put any questions that you have in the live chat throughout the webinar. Um, and we'll answer your questions either during this webinar um, live. And if they are not answered this time, we will be posting um, questions and answers uh, publicly on our website um, at a, in, within the coming days. So um, we also have a contact information um, email at the end of the webinar. You can contact us anytime. So again, welcome. Thank you so much for your project, your interest in project launch um, and in this funding opportunity. So we'll go to the next slide. So a quick overview of some basic information regarding um, the project launch notice of funding opportunity. The estimated amount of this um, opportunity hey is there. to $800,000 per year per award. Please put yourself on mute um, if you just joined. The length of the project period is up to five years. The due date um, for this application is March 21st. 2023 this year. The anticipated award date is August 31st of this year. And the anticipated start date for grant, uh, awardees is September 30th, 2023. The estimated number of awards is 13. And um, there are 13 uh, potential awardees and there is no cost sharing or match required for this, for this grant. Next slide. Thanks. Um, the purpose of this program is to promote the wellness of young children from birth to eight years of age by addressing the social, emotional, cognitive, physical, and behavioral aspects of their development, as well as, well as prepare these children to thrive in school and beyond. These awards will also provide local communities or tribes with resources to disseminate effective and innovative early childhood mental health practices and services. With this program, SAMHSA aims to promote resilience and emotional health for children, youth, and families. Next slide. Looking at who is eligible for this grant program, eligible applicants are states and territories, including the District of Columbia, political subdivisions of states, Indian tribes, or tribal organizations, um, health facilities or programs operated by or in accordance with the contract or award with the Indian Health Service or other public or, pr or private nonprofit entities. 
um, applicants must submit documentation of their nonprofit applicants must sorry Jasmine can you hear me can folks hear me yes we can hear you okay I muted for a moment my apologies applicants must submit documentation of their nonprofit status in attachment eight of the application and applicants must also submit documentation of their eligibility in attachment um, nine. After your application is reviewed and if your application score is within the fundable range, SAMHSA will contact you to request that additional documentation be sent by email or uploaded through ERA Commons or to verify that the documentation you submitted is complete. If SAMHSA does not receive this documentation within the time specified, your application will not be considered for an award. Next slide, please. Um, in this slide, it lists the re required application components and then um, the pages on which these components are um, further detailed in the notice of funding opportunity. So please be mindful and aware of the required application components. So this includes budget information, SF-424A or Federal Financial Report, FFR, budget justification and narrative, project narrative to be no longer than 10 pages, um, attachments one through three, this includes letters of commitment from participating organizations, data collection instruments and interview protocols, and consent forms. Next slide, please. Um, additionally, there are um, sorry, attachments four through eight. Attachment four is the project timeline. Attachment three is a bio, bio, or biographical sketches and position descriptions. Attachment six is the letter to the single state agency or SSA. Attachment seven is confidentiality and SAMHSA participant protection and human subjects guidelines. Attachment B is documentation of um, nonprofit status. Next slide, please. All applicants uh, must register within the National Institutes for Health or NIH's ERA Commons in order to submit an application. This process can take up to six weeks. If you believe you're interested in applying for this opportunity, um, start the registration process immediately and don't wait to start the process. Um, you must submit your application uh, through grants.gov. All applications that are successfully submitted must be validated by grants.gov before proceeding to the NIH ERA Commons system um, and validations. If for some reason your application is not accepted, you will receive a subsequent notice from grants.gov indicating that the application submission has been rejected. Um, correct any errors and resubmit through grants.gov. The person submitting your application must, must be properly registered with grants.gov as the authorized organization representative or AOR for the specific DUNS number cited on the SF-424. Next slide, please. Okay. And all applicants are required to submit um, four registration processes uh, to complete four registration com processes. This is Dunn and Bradstreet Data Universal Numbering System to obtain a Dunn's number, the System Award Management or SAM, grants.gov, and ERA Commons. If you have already completed registrations for Dunn's, SAM, and grants.gov, you need to ensure that your accounts are still active and then register for ERA Commons. Um, Caitlin, this is Nancy. Yeah. So there is an updated, um, DUNS is no longer required. Oh, okay. So okay. This is an old, um, I'll find the new one and drop it into the chat for everyone. Okay, thanks Nancy. Okay. All right, so everyone just please read the chat. Nancy's gonna drop in some, some new guidance. 
Um, that's uh, a revision from what I just mentioned with respect to the Dunn's number. And again, just to reiterate, um, put any questions that you have in the chat and we will make sure to answer those questions either now um, and or we'll post frequently asked questions and answers. Um, and and Kayla, I'm gonna say when we post this webinar, um, we'll make sure that this slide is corrected. So when they pull it right. off the website, it'll be correct. Great, okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks, Nancy. Okay, all right, next slide, please. Okay, and the next slide. Next slide again, Jasmine. Thank you. Okay, so required activities. Um, below are the required activities for this grant. Um, first, for project launch, required activity is to conduct culturally and linguistically appropriate validated screening and assessments. Um, to ensure early identification of behavioral and developmental concerns, including perinatal and maternal depression and substance misuse among parents and caregivers, including alcohol and opioid use. Screening of children may include the coordination with local early and periodic screening diagnostic and treatment or EPSDT providers to provide comprehensive and preventive health care services for children. Second required activity is to provide family and parent training to help parents, guardians, and family caregivers provide healthy, safe, and secure environments in which young children can learn and grow. Third required activity is to develop and implement a plan to equip and train providers with the knowledge, skills, and resources to address young children's and caregivers' behavioral health within primary care settings, settings including on-site or virtual telephonic consultation, screening, assessment, brief intervention, and or referral to specialty care. Next slide, please. Additionally, required activities include um, to provide mental health consultation in early care and education to ensure that child care and educational settings provide optimal learning environments to young children and social, emotional, and behavioral concerns are identified and addressed through screening, assessment, intervention, and or referral, particularly for racial and ethnic minority families. Another required activity is to establish or enhance an existing Young Child Wellness Council, YCWC, to provide support to the project. Representation on the YCWC must include, but is not limited to, the following system partners, health, public health, behavioral health, education, child care, Head Start, child welfare, and early intervention, family and care, caregiver family members must make up at least 10% of the council. Additionally, a required activity is to develop and implement a plan to improve coordination and collaboration across child and family serving systems and programs. Lastly, on this slide, a required activity for project launch is to develop and implement a public awareness communications plan to promote early childhood development, mental health, and outreach through multiple modalities. Next slide. There are also, recipients are also required to report performance on the following measures. Um, these are infrastructure, development, prevention, mental health promotion indicators. So these are data collection and performance measurement requirements. Re requirements include reporting on the number of individuals who have received training in prevention and mental health promotion through the grant the number of organizations collaborating, coordinating, and sharing or sharing resources with other organizations as a result of the award, the number of people receiving evidence-based mental health-related services as a result of the award, the number of individuals screened for mental health or related interventions, and the number of individuals referred to mental health or related services. Next slide. And here are budget and, and funding restrictions to note. Um, 
An illustration of a budget and narrative justification is included in Appendix L of the Notice of Funding Opportunity, um, Appendix L Sample Budget and Justification. It is highly recommended that you use this sample budget format for your application. Your proposed budget must reflect the funding limitations, restrictions specified in Section uh, uh, before dash five, specifically identify the items associated with these costs in your budget. Also note no more than 15% of the total award up for the budget period may be used for data collection, performance measurement, and performance assessment. So, and also please see appendix I or page 64 of the notice of funding opportunity for further SAMHSA standard funding restrictions. Next slide, please. Again, this is just a reminder, please put any questions that you have in the chat, in the live chat. Um, we are only taking questions during this webinar via the chat and we will answer here um, and also publicly, publicly post um, frequently asked questions and answers. Next slide, please. This slide shows the application evaluation criteria um, and um, the points for each section. Um, so for section A of the application, this is population of focus and statement of need. And that has 20 points and should be approximately two pages. Um, section B of the application should be proposed implementation approach. This has the highest number of points here. Um, of these four sections, 35 points, and that's that should be approximately five pages, not including attachment four, which is a project timeline. Please note the timeline cannot be over two pages and should be limited to, it uh, should be limited, submitted in attachment four. Section C is staff and organizational experience. This is 30 points and should be approximately two pages. Section D, the application is data collection and performance measurement. This is 15 points um, and it should be approximately one page. Okay, next slide, please. Next, we'll discuss in detail each of the sections a bit further. Section A, which is the statement of need. In this section, identify and describe the proposed geographic catchment area where the project will be implemented um, and that will be impacted by this project. Describe the need to increase the capacity to implement and improve the wellness of young children from birth to eight years of age by addressing the social, emotional, cognitive, physical, and behavioral aspects of their development in the proposed catchment area and describe the service gaps and other problems related to the need for social, emotional, cognitive, physical, and behavioral health aspects of the development in the selected geographic catchment area and identify the data sources. Next slide, please. Section B is the proposed approach. Describe in this section the goals and measurable objecti objectives. See also Appendix E in the NOFO of your proposed project and describe how they align with the statement of need as outlined in, in A.2. Also describe how you will implement the required activities as stated in section, um, in section one, sorry, section I. Next slide, please. Continuing with the proposed approach in attachment four, provide a chart or graph depicting a realistic timeline for the entire five years of the project period, showing dates, key activities, and responsible staff. These key activities must include the requirements outlined in section I. Note, be sure to show that the project can be implemented and service delivery um, can begin as soon as possible and no later than four months after the grant award. The timeline cannot be over two pages and should be submitted in attachment four. The, recommend, the recommendation of pages for this section does not include the timeline. Next slide, please. 
Okay, section C is staff management and relevant experience. In this section, describe the experience of your organization with similar projects providing services to children, birth to eight years of age, and their caregivers. Also identify any other organizations that will partner in the proposed project and describe their specific roles and responsibilities in this project. If applicable, letters of commitment from each partner must be included in attachment one of your application. If you are not partnering with any other organizations, ind indicate so in your response. Also, please uh, provide a complete list of staff positions for the project, including the key personnel, which is the project director and project evaluator and other significant personnel. For each staff member, describe their role, level of effort, and their qualifications, including their experience providing services to the children, birth to eight years of age, and familiarity with their culture and languages. Okay, next slide. Okay, and section D is data collection and performance measurement. Um, in this section, provide specific information about how you will collect the required data for this program and how such data will be utilized to manage, monitor, and enhance the program. See Appendix F for additional information. Describe your quality improvement efforts and explain how you will use the data to address your identified behavioral health disparities and close these gaps. Next, next slide, please. That brings us to the conclusion of this pre-applicant webinar for the Notice of Funding Opportunity for Project Launch. Um, the point of contact for um, any questions is Brooke Sims, Government Project Officer. I was covering for her today. The email to which you can send any questions um, is launch23 at samsa.hhs.gov is listed on the slide. For any fiscal or budget related questions, please contact um, the Office of Financial Resources, Division of Grants Management. The email is there at foacmhs at samsa.hhs. Um, gov. And again, if you included a question in the chat um, that may not have been answered during this webinar, we will be posting questions and answers publicly um, uh, within the coming days. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining uh, and for your interest in Project Launch. Oh, Nancy, do you have? Well, I was going to say, do you? Uh, how long do you have this webinar scheduled for? Well, we do Alex? have it. Um, I think we actually have it scheduled for another for at least another another minutes. Minute minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was going to say, do you want to um, do you want to um, do you want to see if there's any questions we can answer, or do you want to want to not tackle that? There's some that are kind of oh, in the, from the chat or just yeah done. yeah from the chat. I've been okay. tracking them. Okay. Sure. Um, let's both of us put the nofo up so we can always look at that too. Um, so the first question came in and we can, if we need to do, um, guys, if it's something that we need to do some research on that we can't just all answer off the cuff, mm -hmm. we will, we will do that. We will work to get these questions posted to you. No, um, we'll work to get these questions posted by close of business on Monday. Cause there's not that many Caitlin. Okay. Um, and I think, um, we can tackle these. Um, and so we'll post them on the, the, the web page. So Caitlin, I'm going to read them to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the first question is, hang on, I'm going to go to my document here. Um, keep putting them in the chat cause I'll copy and paste them as they um, come in as, as before everybody hangs up. So Caitlin, we have a primary geographical target area of a single county. Mm -hmm. However, we are considering expanding the geography to two other counties that we serve in years three and five. If we mention possible expansion into these other areas, do we need to expound on these areas in section A1? In section A1. So if you put it in your application, you would need to expand on it. You could also 
Keep your application simple and what you plan to do. There's nothing wrong with saying in your timeline, years three and five, uh, plan to expand to ABC County, you know, DEF County. You can put that and just put it in your timeline and you can talk a little bit about it. They don't expect you to have details, of course. Or you can put what you're going to do now. I mean, that makes the most sense to me. Or you can put what you're going to do now and when it's the time comes, um to do that you can work with your gpo um it's it's not really a change in scope it's just that you're working with more people so i guess i kind of gave you two answers and my my advice is going to be go ahead and put in your application just talk about it to the degree that you can right now they're gonna not expect a fleshed out um plan but you want to put in your timeline you want to talk about it in your in your um the appropriate sections of your application Question two, we'll give you a more uh, eloquent response in, in writing. Is there a limit to how many individuals can be salaried through the grant? Hmm. Nancy, do you uh, no. refer, refer back to the NOFO, but it, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. No, uh, limit here's a tip for NOFOs. If it doesn't say you can't do it, um, you know, if it unless it's explicitly stated, this is required, this is allowable, or these are things you cannot do, you, it's fair game. Um, now, whether or not how it's scored and everything, that's we can't predict that, but um, that's kind of a good rule to follow. So, no, there's not any explicit um, cap other than like your evaluation. You know, like things that are capped in your NOFO. Um, should the required timeline be included in the project narrative or only in attachment four? Yeah, that's included in attachment four. Correct. Um, can you please expand on expectations for requirement, the required activity four? Can you scroll to that? The fourth required activity. Okay. Let's, um, let's see. And it's provide mental health consultation in ECE setting. Would accepting referrals for mental behavioral from, from ECEs and or providing education for providers and caregivers on benefits of structured early education curriculum and child development suffice? Hmm. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. That's development. In, are you referring to development a public awareness? And that would, you're saying that you would like to do that by providing education. So the fact that you're providing education, that would be a public awareness. Um, again, a lot of these is we, we can't answer specifically. We can't tell you how to write your application. We can't say, oh yeah, that's a great activity. Put that in. Um, we can't. Uh, it is for you to create your program based on your community, based on your population. And it's for the independent reviewers to score. Um, that's the answer to that question. Um, next, is this something a local board of education qualifies for? So Jasmine, can you pull up the eligibility? Or is this geared towards health organizations? So the eligibility states, territories, including the District of Columbia, political subdivisions of states, Indian tribes or tribal organizations, health facilities or programs operated by or in accordance with a contract or an award with the Indian Health Service, or, and this is a big one, other public or private nonprofit entities. So, any of those things, if this Board of Education qualifies for any of those things, very easily it could be a public subdivision of state. It could also be a public or private nonprofit entity. It would. We don't gear the uh, application towards an organization. So if your organization meets this eligibility, then you can assume it's geared to you. There, there's, there is nothing in it that we're looking for a certain applicant. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify what you mean by equip and train providers, Caitlin? By the what and train providers? Sorry? Equip, equip, equip and, train. and train providers. Sure. Can we, Desmond, can we go to um, the requirements section? 
in the slides. So um, go from there. Keep going. Keep going. Required activities. Yeah, required activities, sorry. Hold on one second. Keep going. Keep going, next one. It was the one right before that. And the question really is what you mean by providers in that. Okay, statement. go back one slide, Jasmine. Ah, develop and implement okay. a plan to equip and train providers. Who are the providers is who she's asking. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so again, to Nancy's previous point, um, if it doesn't include additional specificity here, um, you know, providers um, can include clinical providers. Um, these could include other, um, so that, that could be a range of different folks. Um, and you're providing them with the knowledge, skills, and resources to address behavioral health in the primary care setting. This, this, could, this could be a whole range of, of different kinds of health and clinical providers. Um, yeah, so who, who, whoever are your providers in your community that would provide provide any more any like resources? Um, you can make it be there's there's no specific providers. Whoever does this for your, um, you know, so you would maybe pediatricians, right. daycare, you know, uh. uh your WIC offices, like any place that these this age population would be going to um, to be receiving support. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's that's a good point. I'll I'll get to um, Corey uh, Irvin Stewart. Um, that's a really good point that you made. But let's let's see if we can get through these, and then we'll we'll um, Caitlin and I will work to maybe get this back out and posted today. Uh, the good point, Caitlin, um, we wait till Monday, the application is due 10 days later. So it, we'll, we'll try to, to get this turned around for you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing this a little late. Um, is there a requirement for the database to use? Is there a specific database that they have to use? So uh, with respect to, I mean, Different programs have their own, you know, databases, clinical databases that they use. We don't have any requirement with respect to that. We do have, um, Jasmine, can you go back to um, data collection where we talk about the SPARS indicators? Um, we do have a certain data requirements um, for what we call IPP indicators. Um, so collecting that data on the number of individuals tra tra uh, trained, organizations that you're collaborating with and so on. Um, we do have, um, SAMHSA has its own um, database where grantees are required to report their data in that database. Um, and you know, if you are awarded a grant, we um, project officers uh, will, will assist you in um, onboarding, being able to understand how to enter the SPAR system and input data. Does that answer the question? Yeah, basically, Caitlin, I hear uh, what I heard you say is there is no specific database that needs to be used. Okay. Right. Right. Other than what other than like the SPAR system? Other than SPARS, but they're right. free to select any database system that they want to use. But they're right. they're they're evaluated ones to, to use. Right, or they're about right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question: Must the ten percent family and caregiver requirement? for the YCWC be met by the time of application submission or can applicants make this part of their proposed mm -hmm. application plan? Yeah, that can be a part of your proposed application plan. That's a required activity. So that's something that you will you will wanna make happen when you're, when you, if and when you're awarded the grant and you have. I, I'm so excited that we, we directly answered that question. That makes <laughs> um, Okay, here's, here's uh, go to the evaluation section, Jasmine. So Caitlin, this mm -hmm. LOFO identifies five areas of performance measurement. Mm -hmm. The IPPs, this one's talking about. Okay. The number of children screened, the number of referrals, 
the number of individuals receiving services. Are there require dot dot dot? Are there requirements for evaluating the outcomes for children and families? Example: changes in parent-child relationships, improvement in caregiver mental health. Are there requirements for long-term follow-up? Example: twelve-month follow-up for outcome. No, there are no long-term exactly. requirements. No. Uh, yeah, okay. This is not a NOMS. I don't know if anybody's familiar with NOMS. This is this does not collect client-specific data. Um, so this is just the IPP measures are collected. However, those things you mentioned are all really good points to measure. And those would be great things to put in your evaluation and include it in your annual report, your evaluation plan, mm -hmm. and to talk about. So that's mm -hmm. great stuff for you to include for your, your local community and your project and to build your sustainability. So all good things, but we do not require those measures. Mm -hmm. should probably, but we don't. Okay. Uh, is the abstract scored? So the abstract, uh, the, the pieces that are scored are right here on the screen. Population of focus and statement of need, proposed implementation approach, staff and organizational experience, data collection and performance measurement. That's what's scored. Do we need to reference B3 in the narrative? Uh, if you're still on, can you tell me what B3 is? I don't. I'm looking at the application. I don't know if I, B3. So it would be right after that evaluation requirements. Go scroll down to the next. Oh, B3, B3 timeline. No. Go to the next slide, Jasmine. Okay, keep going to B. Go to B. Ah, go to B. Oh, there's only two. I thought I was onto something there. Go to the next slide. Oh, okay, there is three. So this is what she's talking about. Do we need to reference B3 in the narrative? So Caitlin, in their narrative, mm -hmm. do they need to reference the proposed approach? This is that timeline. So do they need to talk about the timeline in their narrative? You need, no, you just in, in attachment four. That's the only place you have to talk about. That's this. where it's required. Yeah. Um. We want to align our measures and procedures with feedback from our partners and include qualitative forms of data collection. Is that okay? Or do we have to include standardized measures? Um, Jasmine, can you go to the evaluation section, not the evaluation criteria for the application, but the evaluation regarding not that keep going the um keep going uh, the, you know what i'm trying to look for um caitlin the the the, the part that talks about ipp and performance yeah the spars yeah, yeah the spars um, so sorry the, jasmine that is slide 12 um Okay, these are your performance measures. So now go to the next one. Okay, it doesn't talk about it. Um, hang on, let me see, guys. That's a good question because in the NOFO, it very well may say data collection. Mm -hmm. um, you're required to collect and report certain data. You must document your plan for data collection and reporting in your project narrative. Section D, this will be collected via SPARS. Um, annually, recipients are required to report on their progress addressing the goals and objectives identified in the project narrative. Recipients must periodically review the performance data they report to SAMHSA, assess their progress, and use this information to improve the management of the project. The project performance assessment should be designed to help you determine whether you are achieving the goals, objectives, and outcomes you intend to achieve and whether adjustments need to be made to your project. 
Performance assessments should be used to determine whether your project is having, will have the intended impact on behavioral health disparities. Um, no, you can look at Appendix E and Appendix F. If there's anything specific in that, but it looks like you are free to choose your the way you're going to measure your um, performance um, assessments. I mean, I think that's actually really great uh, to get feedback from your partners mm -hmm. and um, you know your stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, or nonprofit faith-based entities eligible and competitive with 501c3 status. Um, and I believe I responded to this that um, I thought I did. Public, private, nonprofit entities are eligible to apply for this grant. There isn't any delineation between it being a faith based or not. So um, as long as you're a nonprofit, which 501c3s are, um, you could consider yourself eligible. Um, do the letters of commitment need to be established and submitted with the application, or can it be set up once awarded? Letters of commitment need to be submitted with the application. Um, and then it goes on to say, will be somebody asked, will it be a screen out? Um, we have not established the reviewer criteria yet um, of, as far as the application that I know of. I will say that there are, there are grant programs that if the letters of commitment are, well, hey, can you go to the letters of commitment in the application, in the, um, I can tell you that actually, it says it in the application about letters of commitment. Do not include letters of support. They will not be considered. Um, if, if it makes you ineligible, it would say in the NOFO that um, if letters of commitment are not attached, included in the application, you will be screened out. It will be very specific. So if the NOFO does not say that, um, then it, it you would be reviewed. Um, if it doesn't say that, you will be reviewed. However, if they are not there, you can pretty much count on the fact that that would be a point reduction because that's a required component of the application. But what I see is that it says under attachment one, all it says is do not include any letters of support. Reviewers will not consider them if you do. Um, okay. Um, Caitlin, can they target zero to five instead of zero to eight? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then there's another question about that. Can the project focus on a restricted age range, example, birth to age five, or is it required that activity span? The, so you can, you can do zero to five. Um, do you need a list of every staff member or just the key staff members? Um, you have to go back. You definitely need. So what you need, it says, key personnel or staff members who must be part of the project regardless of whether or not they receive a salary or compensation. These staff members must make a substantial contribution and should reflect the diversity, equity, and inclusion selection of staff. Um, that's all it says. You really need to just pay attention to the, um, hang on, let me find that section. Can you go to the uh, evaluation criteria again, Jasmine, like where it says the scoring? Uh, letters of commitment, data collection, timeline, biographical sketches, and position descriptions. Mm. It doesn't, it doesn't say. Oh, thank you. Um, it doesn't say, spread the gaps. I'm trying to look, proposed implementation. 
Um, so, oh, here. So in section C is where you'd want to see that, where you would find that. Um, describe the experience, partners, letters of commitment. If you are not partnering with any other organizations, indicate so. Provide a okay. Provide a complete list of staff positions for the project, including the key personnel and project evaluator and other significant personnel for each staff member. Describe their role, level of, level of effort, and qualifications. Um, so yes, you do need to. Well, that took a lot to get to that answer. You do need to include a list of all staff. Um, if you do not have, okay, I already answered that one. Um, you're not declared ineligible from what I can see, but please read the NOFO carefully in case it's someplace else. If the NOFO, in the NOFO it says not to add letters of commitment. However, you just, it does say that. Uh, if you go to page, letters of commitment are um, attachment one. Go to page 19, attachment one, letters of commitment. I, I don't know where you read that it's not. Letters of support are not included, but letters of commitment, there is a difference. The letter needs to say, we are committed. ABC agency is committed to provide the following services, supports, roles, and responsibilities to DEF organization in support of the uh, um, project launch grant. Needs to say commitment. It cannot say we support. That's not acceptable. Um, can we have a co-PI with 0.65 FTE and a co-PI with 0.35 FTE? So can they split their... Yeah, yeah you can, yes. Yeah. Um, we will get those FAQs back. We will get this back to you as soon as we can humanly, as soon as humanly possible. Um, Caitlin, can you say more about the role, purpose, function of the YCWC? Young Child, Child Wellness Council. Yeah. Sure. And maybe, Jasmine, can we go to, let's see, this will be on slide number. on slide number 11. Yeah. So you may already have a Young Child Wellness Council or um, group already established um, or you, you, so you can enhance that group or you can establish a Young Child Wellness Council. So um, this should be to provide support to the project. Folks who are members of the Young Child Wel Wellness Council, um, they have they must include, but you can also invite other folks from health, public health, behavioral health, education, child care, head start, child welfare, and early intervention. Um, but then you also need to have family and caregiver members be part of this group. Um, this this group is a way to um, bring together community members and key partners and players, um, talk about the needs of the community um, and um, ways to collaborate and connect um, to hopefully enhance your program. Thank you. Um... Uh, find that database. I gotta find yeah, that. You read it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the key roles is a 0.5 FTE for program evaluation. Is it okay to have this role within a sub award? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, are letters of support or commitment? There's no support or commitment. There is commitment, only commitment. Get rid of that support. That's not. If you submit letters of support, they will not be reviewed and it's just taking up space. Um, so do not attach or include letters of support, only letters of commitment. 
So are letters of commitment needed from the committee members or can we just identify the orgs that will be included? Um, yeah, that's for you to choose. Who are you partnering with? That's who you need to put your letters of, that's who needs that be, have your letters, you need letters of commitment from. Um, when documenting community needs, how recent does the data need to be? When, when documenting community needs, what was the second part of the how, question? How recent does the data need to be? I mean, look at the NOFO again to see if there's specificity regarding that. Um, but you'd obviously want it to be relevant um, to the community. Two, three years. Yeah. As a former reviewer myself, if we saw something like more than really we look for two years, three years, it's going to be old and it's not, it's, you know, I mean, yeah. See if there's, if it's specifically outlined in the, in the, um, it is important to cite your data. And I believe they use the um, term, just like Caitlin used, um, relevant, recent, current, you know, kind of data. So the most current that you can get. Now, if it's something that's old and you say, this is the most current data, like this is like part of the problem is this not, there is no data on this and this is why we need to do it. Then put that in there. You can explain that. Um, I mean, that, that is a valid, that is a valid point. Um, we did this, can, do, can you do school age five to eight only? And this this kind of speaks back to the question of you know, can can you focus on a um, yeah so that one was zero to five so could they not do zero to five but only do five to eight yeah I mean the so just to reiterate the the purpose of the program is to promote the wellness of young children birth through birth to eight years of age so that's you know that's that's a population and their caregivers. That's a population that we're we're looking at. Um, so um, there's, as far as I know from the NOFO, I don't think there's anything in there to say that you can't focus particularly on a certain age group within the zero to eight. Um, I'm just going to look through required activities again here. But you know, as you as you're proceeding, keep in mind, you know the, the the program is it is targeting zero to eight, zero to eight years of age. Um, but I don't think there's 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 nothing stopping anyone from applying with a focus on kids in a particular age range within zero to eight. But right. um, just know that the program purpose is is in its entirety. So um, of zero to eight years. Okay, thank you. Um, I've just dropped the uh, NOFO link into the chat for someone to ask that question. Um, okay. Uh, Undocumented green news. FAQ. Okay, can you explain page 15? Page 15 of the NOFO. Reimbursement of the provision of um, The reimbursement for the provision of services as it would apply to behavioral and mental health services provided to children in the state foster care system that are covered under Medicaid. If the services are for funding that would supplement or fill gaps, not to plan. I, 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 don't, I don't know what you're asking. It's not a question, but yeah, you cannot supplant. So... You do need to utilize third-party reimbursement. So in other words, you can't supplant. So let's say, let's say you're using grant funds for something, um, for some services that are Medicaid reimbursable and you get that Medicaid payment. It is your responsibility to pay the federal funds from this grant back. Okay, it is your responsibility to manage that. It's not ours. We are not going to manage that for you. 
you are the ones that have to manage your um, third party insurance, third party billing, and the way that you do not supplant funds and you do not double dip, as they say. That, that's, that's on you. That's not really an application issue. That is more when you, if you get awarded in your finance office, your business office, are managing your drawdowns and your funds. Okay, and your reimbursement. If you're awarded, that's a question you can ask the grants management specialist. You can also right now email the, uh, I believe it's the FOA at CMHS, um, the, the other, the grants management um, resource box that's listed under the program, under, um, under the program um, resource mailbox. Um, that Brooke, that Brooke and Caitlin man, there's another email address and that's for finance questions. Um, is there a clearinghouse for the type of evidence-based practices to be used, Caitlin? There's, there's no one clearinghouse that, you know, we say you need to, to go and use. Obviously there are different resources out there. Um, SAMHSA, you can also look at the SAMHSA website for, for some resources, um, but you do want to, you know, show that just, you, you do want to, in your application, um, discuss the evidence-based practices that you're gonna be, that would be used. Um, and, and and yeah, so, but there isn't one clearinghouse that we have a recommendation for. Um, SAMHSA does have a best practices um, webpage yeah. um, on their SAMHSA.gov. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other, you know, NITC, National Children's Traumatic Stress Network. They have some really great resources. Mm -hmm. Um. If staff will be from the communities of color targeted, if staff will be from the communities of color targeted, do they have to already be selected with a resume attached? You can put TBD in your application. If it's a key personnel and you don't have that person hired yet, you can like attach the, you can okay. see the job description, um, but you can't, key personnel, they need to be pre-approved by your G, um, uh, your GPO anyway, after award. Um, you can include them if you have them already selected. Um, you can include the resume and the job description, and then that approval would come after award. Um, but but you can you can put TV, you can be TV and then submit the resume after after award. Um, must we provide the mental health SED assessment for parents or can we refer out? Can they have a partner do those assessments? You can have, yes, you, you can, you can, you can refer out as well. Um, and who should the letters of commitment be addressed to? The letters of commitment should be addressed to you, the applicant. So you're, you're having a partner, uh, an organization commit to working with you on this project that executive director or whoever is the president of that organization, whatever writes the letter to you, the applicant. They're committing to you, they're, they're not committing to us. Um, so that means you just to include the positions, not the names or resumes, correct? Yeah, if you don't have the person to name, you, you can't yeah. submit, submit their name. And if you don't have the resume, you can't submit the resume. So yeah, you wanna at least include the position. I did share the NOFO link and can we outsource the evaluator? Oh. Yes. yes. Um, I'm sorry, Kate, that we didn't do this sooner. Um, I really am. Uh, the total page limits. Oh, wait. Um, if our project will likely qualify for not human subject research, do we still need to submit a sample consent form? Yes. Um, what is the total page limit? Um, inclusive of the project narrative and attachment. The NOFO does it. Well, it does include page limits. So the narrative is 10 pages, no more than 10 pages. Um, if you look at each section of, it does say the pages, 
if it doesn't say a page limit. So for instance, project narrative maximum 10 pages total. Um, the project timeline maximum of two pages. The biographical sketches and position description should be two pages or less um, each, no longer than one page. The, the description no longer than one page and each biographical sketch should be two pages or less. Um, there is no page limit for attachment six. Um, confidential and SAMHSA protect is a required attachment. Um, the others don't. If you go, keep going down. Um, section A is approximately two pages. Section B is approximately five pages. Uh, the timeline is not counted in your number of pages. The section C is approximately two pages. Section D is approximately one page. Um, we answered that. Oh, thank you for dropping that in, Caitlin. Caitlin dropped in the link to the SAMHSA resources regarding evidence informed practices. Mm -hmm. What if they've already obtained letters of commitment that are addressed to Brooks Sims? That's fine. That, that's fine. You, you don't change them. That's okay. Um, that that's absolutely that's fine. Nobody's gonna. That's good. That's fine. Um, yeah, Carla. Thank you, Carla. A lot of these questions can be answered by reading the NOFO. Thank you, Carla. Appreciate your support. Um, okay, so I think we'll you know. Um, We'll, we'll do our best to get these posted um, ASAP. You also can, of course, email the resource box. We answer those every day. Um, and one new message. Mm -hmm. I believe TS the timeline. I don't, I don't know what that, Paula, if you're still on, Oxton Nobile. Um, Will this be offered again? I mean, we were we're you know it's a, according to the presidential budget, the 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 budget and appropriations. However, quite possible it's been funded, you know, pretty regularly. So, um, and and also this is the other thing that I always I always share. Even if it's a tight, if you can get an application in, do it. Um, even if you don't get awarded. What does happen, and it's fairly common, is we may very well fund off the shelf. So we can't fund you off the shelf, meaning you've applied, but you maybe didn't get awarded this time. And let's say we get money from Congress in the middle of the year, or there were, were is money left in the coffers that were unobligated. We go back to grant programs, and we go down and go down that application pool of those that have already been scored and we fund them. And that's called funding off the shelf. If you don't apply, you don't have that opportunity. Just, just saying. Um, if staff will be from the communities, oh, we already did that. I think we got them all. We served three to eight. Oh, wait. Yeah, that served three to eight. I sent a question earlier. So yes, you may qualify. However, you would still need to be able to access services mm -hmm. for children birth to two. This may come as a form of a partnership or collaboration with the partner agency to serve this population center. Mm -hmm. Do you still mm -hmm. agree? Yeah, that's still an appropriate answer. Yeah. Um, did that, did that, did that. Um, uh, okay, that's it. We're going to call it. We're going to call it so we can get on these answers. <laughs> right, Caitlin? Yes, we're on it. Thank you. Um, and I think, yeah, we'll we'll get to this as quickly as possible. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for your interest. Um, we hope you apply. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and we'll we'll have some Q&A out that um, hopefully we'll have some clarify any, any further questions you have. Please send along any questions to the general inbox, too. Um, in the slides and Let and again see. any finance questions budget yes. questions send those to the um send these those to and i'm going to drop it in here real quick who you're going to send those questions to because it's different um fiscal budget related questions 
will go to this person and this address. There you go. Put it in the chat. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, there you go. Great. Jasper, yeah. don't close the meeting yet because I need to save all the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll just let everybody pop mm -hmm. off. Yes. I'm trying to find my last question. The Carla Ayers, that's my favorite one. A lot of these can be answered in the no question. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what a surprise. Come through it. When we, when we, ah, that's the last one. All right. This is where I start. Okay, what do you think, Caitlin? Oh, there's still 21 people on that. Okay, let's see. Desmond, is there? Mm. Huh? Is there a way? Uh, just thinking, is there a way to have people back in uh, the, the waiting room? What we can do is we can um, um, end it. Can you end it, um, Jasmine? Mm, okay. There and it's still recording too, Jasmine. Oh, so uh, yeah, stop the recording. Okay, sorry, I will stop recording.